Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 13th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA in his post today took apart a piece of a malware, actually the traffic collected from that malware that Pratt posted to his collection of malware traffic. The interesting thing about this particular sample was that it included cobalt strike traffic that was not encrypted. Usually, Cobalt Strike traffic should be encrypted with AES, uh, but, uh, well, if you're using the trial version as uh, this is what may have happened here, the traffic is not encrypted and it gives an easy, simple insight into how the Cobalt Strike uh, beacon and command control traffic works. So uh, Didi walks you through some of that and also how to decode some of this traffic. And given Cobalt Strike's capabilities, it's very likely that a less sophisticated attacker doesn't want to pay the money to purchase Cobalt Strike or find a leaked version of the software will use the unencrypted trial version because, well, better to have an unencrypted command control channel than no command control channel at all. And Cisco published an interesting field notice. Now, field notices are not security vulnerabilities, but since it does affect the ASA 5506 series security appliances, I consider it sort of security relevant. The problem here is that after 3.2 years of uptime, these appliances will fail due to an SSD disk bug. The problem is actually 100 million seconds. So 3.2 years translates roughly to 100 million seconds. Once you reach that many seconds of uptime, the SSD will fail. This is not just for these Cisco appliances. Similar bugs were reported, for example, for some servers that use the same type of SSD and a firmware update to the SSD will fix it. And of course, not updating your devices more than every three years is probably advisable too. And as part of this, you usually need to reboot the device anyway. In a discussion among us handlers, uh, one handler stated that uh, he came across a device that had an uptime well in excess of seven years. So uh, I guess they don't always get patched and rebooted. And Pulse Secure published a knowledge base article stating if you're having problems with some of the end user features of your Pulse Secure VPN appliance, it's probably due to an expired certificate. This certificate expired on April 12th, so uh, today at midnight UTC. And the client, of course, checking whether or not the certificate is valid uh, will not allow the user to connect. Sadly, it looks like Pulse Secure themselves was a little bit uh, caught by surprise here and the ETA for a fix for at least some of the releases of their software isn't until April 13th or 14th. So that's Tuesday, the day you're going to listen to this podcast. And this year, actually last weekend, we had uh, yet again uh, one of the famous pwn to own contests. This is where exploit uh, developers usually meet, but this time, of course, all online and show off how they're able to breach current and well-patched systems. They were, for example, able to breach a Microsoft Exchange server, also Microsoft Teams, and for Zoom, a zero-click exploit was demonstrated that she actually used three different vulnerabilities to exploit the Messenger app and gain full code execution. The write-ups of these contests are always a little bit uh, depressing, uh, but on the other hand, all exploits demonstrated uh, in this contest are reported uh, to the manufacturers of respective software before they're being made public. 
And Tesla, of course, is not only known for its electric cars, but also for the futuristic uh, intelligence and electronics that comes with uh, these cars. Many of the components are, of course, based on standard software. So, for example, the big console in Tesla cars uses the Google Chrome web browser. And as typical for embedded systems like this, the user isn't going to update the browser themselves self or the auto update is also not typically enabled. Instead, you have to wait for a respective firmware update. To demonstrate this, security researcher Chris Williams has an interesting blog post walking you through writing a exploit against Google Chrome running on a Tesla and gaining code execution. However, this particular exploit was still limited to the sandbox, so wasn't able uh, to hit any other systems. A second exploit would be required in order to break out of the sandbox. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.